Recovery is not a solo endeavor, it's a team sport. You need a community around you to cheer you on, to lend an ear, to pick you back up when you fall. That's what Foundation's Recovery Network's Life Challenge Program is here for. We are a positive, motivational community aimed at breaking down life's barriers and celebrating the accomplishments along the way. Our motto is, Dear Life, Challenge Accepted. Are you up for the challenge? Go to lcaccepted.com or call 615-221-5861. That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Yo, what's up? Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks to humans for bringing us in. And thanks to you for supporting the show. Today's guest is Eric Turnbull. Eric is a super fresh guitar player, probably one of the best I have seen. And in addition to that, he's also a great dude with a very candid sense of humor. Um, Eric also is the 2005 Canadian Guitar Festival champion. He absolutely shreds. And uh, he's just got, got a heart for music and a heart for people as well. So I'm really excited to jump in, introduce him to you guys, and uh, get to know him a bit. We're going to talk with him in just a minute. I want to give some love to everybody supporting the recovery movement, especially those out here in the Bay Area, um, from Vacaville and up to Sacramento, and really all throughout the uh, the great state of California. It's an honor to represent this recovery move, uh, movement from the West Coast to the East Coast, abroad. Um, I mean, we have listeners from all over the world, and uh, I'm really proud and humbled and just honored to be a part of it. Before we get to Eric, we're going to get to him in just a minute. We're going to play a little bit of, uh, of one of his jams, too. I want to tell you about a new treatment called DXRX. DXRX provides access to alcohol treatment specialists, safe medication, and ongoing monitoring for people who want to stop or reduce their drinking all through a simple phone app. So here, here's kind of how it works too. The first appointment, before you start the program, you'll meet with a physician who's a specialist in addiction. You will discuss your goals for drinking, your health history, any concerns, and then uh, your physician will create a personalized care plan for you. Then you can monitor your progress with the breathalyzer and the DXRX mobile app. The physician will also recommend safe, effective, non-habit forming medicine that will ease alcohol cravings. Now, um, the DXRX team is a great group of doctors, professionals. They're from right here in the Bay Area. Um, Jess and I met up with them personally. We had dinner. We met the whole team. Um, we went through the accelerator room. It was just awesome, like 15 or 20 different startups rocking out at that time. Just an awesome experience. Great folks, you can go to thatsoberguy.com and on the right-hand side, you'll see the DXRX logo, Stronger Than Alcohol. Click on that logo and get started today. Also want to give some love to Foundations Recovery Network. Uh, thanks to them, awesome supporters of Sober Guy Radio as well as Sober Nation and SoberPodcast.com. All right, let's talk to Eric Turnbull. Eric is... Um, man, like I said before, just an amazing guitar player. Uh, he was born March 20th, 1977 in Nampany, Ontario, and uh, had already begun playing guitar by the age of 10. Uh, at school, Eric used to entertain classmates with impressions of his teachers and soon learned to combine his guitar playing with his comedy. Um, he's been performing ever since. Uh, Eric is one of, the, one of the many talented artists signed to Candy Rat Records, a small but very effective record label. And like I mentioned before, he's also the uh, 2005 Canadian Guitar Festival champion. Eric, my friend, what is up, man? Thanks for joining Sober Guy Radio. Hey, Shane. Uh, great to uh, be here. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, I really appreciate it. Feeling good today. Do you have a bit of a cold or something? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. And we just let's just address that right now. Nice. I, I didn't know. Start this interview. <laughs> no, I know, man. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm glad you did because I've I've actually had this damn thing for like two weeks now and it will not go away. Like it it's one of those things that, that starts to fade off and then you think you're cool and uh and then you feel like dog shit again the next day. So apparently it's going around. I hope it goes away tomorrow. Let's kind of start here, man. Um I'm gonna play some some of your music real quick uh, in just a second, but um I, I kinda wanted to 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 jump back to kind of how we linked up. 
And uh, I, I know you're part of the Sober Guy, Sober Girl Facebook group, right? Yes, um, absolutely. I think you had reached out and sent me either an email or, or, or um, a message. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, and oh, you and then you had also sent me the documentary. Your your buddy had made That's a documentary. It. What's that documentary called again? That do- documentary is called Jacob's Dad, and uh, it's a friend of mine uh, followed me around for one year. Uh, it was during a time when I drank uh, mm-hmm. very heavy. Um, although the documentary, as you could, as you know, Shane, uh, we talked about the documentary doesn't doesn't exactly really show me drinking a whole lot or anything. But alludes to uh, unhealthy lifestyle, yeah. um, and you can just tell you know something's up, uh, you know, in the yeah. whole. Yeah, I think that I think that's one of the, and I know you and I kind of talked about this before. Um, that was one of the things that really made it appealing to me. Well, number one, there was just super sick guitar playing in there, and you're so passionate about playing playing the guitar that shines throughout. That's pretty obvious, but um, the comedy element in it, and then just there's a lot of heartache there, I think, that was captured in that. But it, it wasn't it wasn't in your face. It was um, it was almost kind of reserved and and toned back a bit. Not to say toned back like it wasn't real. It was very real. Um, but just it, yeah. it, I don't know, man. There was something about it. And I said, and like I get a I get a um, quite a bit of you know emails and stuff. And you know check this out. And so when I got the email originally, I was like, oh cool, I'll, you know, check it out. And I figured I'd, I'd watch five or 10 minutes of it. And then I watched the whole damn thing though. And I was like, man, this thing is just, cool. it's That's just, awesome. uh, yeah, it's, it's such a great, uh, great independent film. And uh, thanks for sharing it with me, man. And a bit of your story. I'm glad that you were able to watch it. And, and I guess it kind of, uh, my friend Ryan Wilkinson, uh, put together and did all the editing for the documentary. Um, he did a fabulous job. Um, he did. but I think, you touched on the fact that, you know, it doesn't always show me drinking because with drinking, there's a lot more side to the story than just physically drinking. There's like, you know, how you are in your day to day managing your day to day uh, living, you know? Yeah, no, totally. And that, um, at at least for me, man, that, that life just got so exhausting of trying to wake up every day and figure out um, how I'm going to drink, but at the same time, not wanting to, and at the same time, feeling like shit from the day before that cycle, man, you know, it's just, um, it's, it's ruthless, man. So how, uh, how long has it been since you have, uh, had a, had a drink? Um, what time is it right now? No, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hey, you gotta have a sense of humor about it. Okay? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, um, it's been, well, November 22nd, 2016 was one year. Nice. So kind of crazy math there. So yeah. Yeah, um, it's over a year, coming up to a year and a half um, soon. Um, but uh, I, I feel incredible. I feel like a completely different person. You look like a completely different person. I'm looking yeah. at you right now. We're we're doing for those of you listening out there. Obviously, you can't see, but we're we have Skype on the video, and um, Eric's lost a ton of weight. Um, you know, you you look completely different in your face. You look, um, you know, just like a new a new man, man. So congrats on that, man. It's just such a cool thing. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I, I, I it's funny all the steps of quitting, um, everything that goes on in your life when you begin to recover yeah. from just like eating better, healthy. And it wasn't until I introduced some exercise, almost a full year um, after I had been sober. It was then when I started exercising, and all that gives you a high, the weight yeah. loss. And yeah, I look back at the documentary, and it was sad to see. Like I was bloated. I smoked cigarettes then, you know, so yeah. even all that went, went, went yeah, the eight track, they say. So it's just gone out of my life. So uh, let's uh, much better. Let, let's uh, I'm going to play. I'm going to play low C. So this was ri- When did you write this? Uh, sorry. When did you write low C? I'm going to play it in just a second here. I want to I want the I, audience to hear. In 2003, I believe. Um, yeah, around 2003, uh, I was warming up uh, before a show and i discovered this kind of strange low tuning and i was playing around with it just warming up actually in the bathroom it was nice and echoey uh-huh. playing bathroom with this bar kind of came up with the hook riff the intro part of it and it kind of went from there and developed but yeah yeah dude it's i don't even know how the fuck you move your fingers that fast but it's got a couple hundred thousand <laughs> views on youtube you can you can check it out on there eric turnbull low c let's check it out real quick Thank you. 
part. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Dude, just like super, super. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know to you. I, I, I guess when you're an artist like that, though, when you play, when you write, when you play, um, does it not seem as you know? I guess. Well, I guess for a guy like me who watches that, I, mean, I play guitar. I, I think I, I had commented that to you too. I said, "Man, you make me, you make me want to sell my guitar when it's after that. Man. <laughs> just shred." Well, I appreciate. And, it. Yeah, and uh, and it's you know it's. But, like when you hear that back, what what do you think? What kind of feeling do you get? I guess is what I'm getting at. Well, uh, you know, um, like is it I, weird or is it? Of that song. It's a, it's a little weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, purposely, uh, like I'm very hard on myself. I'm very critical of yeah. everything that I do. So you Me know, too. I, I totally might understand. not like it as much as the next person. I, uh, I I'm, I'm guess I could say I'm proud that I wrote that song and that I'm I'm just happy that people like it and yeah. and it's a fun song to play. Yeah, it's a fun song to play. It looks fun, yeah. man. I know a lot of people cover it. Um, so, when so you started playing when you were ten, is that right? When you were ten? Yes, I, I was ten years old when I started playing it. Started taking some lessons around that time till um, I was in grade eight, and I just kind of worked ahead and uh, learned some of the the cording and stuff like that. Started playing the Elvis Presley songs and uh, just. Uh, Ended up uh, working ahead, and I, I had a passion for it. I had a, yeah. an interest, an interest for it, and that's really what uh, makes you know anything you you focus on, you move towards, right? So I, something like that just really drove me. And wasn't uh, it like your brother's guitar or something? Yeah, that was uh, the. It was my dad had an old guitar that he actually fixed up that I was able to play, and uh -huh. he kind of like hammered it. So that it had the strings, but this one, the, the strings were like 10 feet off the fretboard oh, and you'd have man. to press so hard. Yeah, it was, it was grueling to learn on, but to this day, I'm, I'm kind of thankful for that. One of the things also, man, that I, that I enjoy is the elements of, um, of fun and comedy that and I think you captured that, like I had mentioned before in the, uh, in the documentary, um, what's your, what's your take on, on just having a good time and lightening up a little bit, man, you make some funny ass videos. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, life's too short to be serious. I've never been that serious of a person, and uh, I just, I just like uh, pointing out the humor. It just comes. It's kind of what I just see the humor and stuff. It kind of comes naturally for me. Yeah. I don't know. I've always been. I like to laugh. That's, I guess, when it comes down to it. I like to laugh, and I like to make people laugh. You know. Yeah, for sure. You can kind of get through. Um, some difficult times with laughter, if you can remember that, you know, take, taking it easy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. With the, with the stuff that, that I used to, you know, the, the guilt, I, I don't know if you ever touched on the guilt from drinking, how heavy that I was oh, dr drinking. I had a sense of humor about it. Like there was just way too much guilt there. How much, how, yeah. how much were you drinking? Like by the end of, or, or towards the end, like what was, what was a typical day like? See, I, I think I have the most amount of. If you were giving out points for for drinkers, like he gets the most amount of points for drinking so much in one day. I think I have points for consistency because I could drink a twenty sixer. When I quit drinking, I was drinking a twenty sixer, um, which uh, is like seven hundred and fifty milliliters of Zambuca a day. I would start at three p.m. and just go until about eight or nine, yeah. and I I'd have little bit left in that yeah. 26er but uh, not too much and I could do that with ease um, uh, yeah so mornings were, were, were not fun there'd sometimes be some 10 a.m. wine you know <laughs> just to combat the, <laughs> yeah, to kinda, so much anxiety to kind of yeah. level off from the night before and then yeah. complimented with sit. Did you get into? Did you do other drugs or anything, or is it pretty much just alcohol that was? I, I did uh, cocaine. I spent some time with cocaine. That that really it was a shorter amount of time. Yeah. But that wrecked me pretty hard. Um, kind of hard to sleep. Like a huh? Period of about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I could never go to bed. I could never leave it alone. If I had whatever I had, I just couldn't leave it alone. I think my record was th uh, was three days and almost the third night. Yeah, you're kind of a different person when you're yeah. up for that long. 
Yeah, but I, I did I did write a song during that time. That, uh, <laughs> How many songs have you written? Um, or if you had a rough, geez, you know, yeah, I, I I never even sat there and figured it out. Uh, I I have I have a lot of songs. Uh, there's stuff that I share on YouTube, and then there's stuff that I've never shared, and then there's yeah. stuff I'm too embarrassed to share. Really? So, uh, what, yeah. What's the stuff that you're too like? What do you mean by too embarrassed? Like. Well, it's stuff that I wrote when I was like 12 or something like oh, that. Oh, I see, but. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can feel you there. Yeah. yeah. Completely That's different cool. uh, different time and state of mind, and but still cool to yeah. know, you know. Coming up as kind of, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the way I kind of viewed this as we've kind I mean, we don't know each other great yet. We're, you know, we've chatted a few times, watched the documentary. Obviously, I've alluded to that a couple times already. Um, I feel like there was a lot of info about you in there. Um what I kind of got from that too, as far as going back, and maybe you can elaborate on this more, was you had this love for music, um, you had you had this love for people and for for comedy too, and you kind of you kind of took that love and this natural gift that God gave you to perform and to and to play the guitar um, as as kind of your almost that that vessel to express emotion for for you as a person. Um, but that being said, that gift was very advanced. Is that pretty fair to say, like in, in a sense when you were young? I mean, without... um, yes, like I, I work, I worked at it, T- totally. but it's something that I get. Yeah. It, it, it advanced for me. Yeah. Um, because it, it kind of, I don't know if you say it came natural. Like, I don't know how to say it, but yeah. like, I know that I worked hard at it and seemed to come quicker to me. And I don't know if it was partly because I worked so hard at it or part natural ability. Does that exist? Yes. You know, I know, you know what I mean? It just seems to be some people are just naturally better at some things than others. Like, yeah, like I'm probably couldn't do uh, multiplication right now, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really good at jerking off, you know, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) And Um, I'm terrible. See, exactly. See, exactly. We all have our, our, our strengths, our weaknesses. I love it. Um, no, but I guess, I guess kind of what I, what I was getting at with that, um, was, do you think that, do you think that there's like this, or there's this artistic thing that drives like almost like a madness at the same time that drives a lot of artists like, um, you know, like you and I who have our own little, you know, our separate art things that we enjoy and things that we're good at. Um, it almost drives, like, I know it almost drove me in, in to a point of insanity at some point. Um, and I don't really know how else to describe it. You can hear sirens in the I'm in Fresno right now, hold up in a hotel room, just in case I didn't mention that, by the way. Um, but yeah, there's there's an element to it that led me down that path of, of drugs and alcohol and um, more sirens in the background. Um, but what what was that like for you as you kind of started to um, to get to get into um to get into drinking more and using that as a tool to, to play music, I guess. Yeah. Well, first of all, in music, it, it totally helped me booze and music and comedy all went so hand in hand for me so well. Yeah. I just love to perform. Like I'll even say like, you know, I'll go to perform somewhere. I'll be like, Oh boy, would I ever like to get, you know, drunk, yeah. like, you know, start drinking as I get there. And then by the time I hit the stage, I got an awesome, an awesome, like a uh, really good buzz on, yeah. you know, for to hit the stage on and then continue after, and you don't have to worry about keeping it too much together, but you know, just getting on stage, just being wrecked is awesome. Especially if you can control, <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? If oh, you yeah. control yourself, you get, cause I, it's funny to say, but I could actually play guitar really good when I was drunk is because I had a lot of practice at it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why people are good at driving drunk because they haven't had practice. <laughs> at <it>. That's very <laughs> true. <laughs> great point um do you feel so you would feel like it would just kind of it you know you would play day in and day out was that kind of would you say that like that's all you wanted to do pretty much is just did you just love playing guitar all the time and that's all you want to do just play guitar yeah i was happy to make you know my couple hundred bucks a night drink play entertain a crowd that could have been great the rest of my life but you know i have a little more responsibilities than that in my life now i have a son you know, I, I need to maintain my health. I, I need to be alive for yeah. people, you know, yeah. <laughs> family and stuff. It's kind of important. It's kind alive. of important. <laughs> yes, that's right. And, and when, you know, it's funny that it wasn't important before huh. because I, I always found that, you know, I, I found that I didn't really care that much. And you come, once you sober up, 
you come into tune with the world. And, you know, I always said to myself, well, if I was going to die tomorrow, I I'd probably, you know, do heroin and do all this. And now I'm thinking if I was going to die tomorrow, I think I might just like to live this. This sobriety is a real trip. Yeah. Like this is a trip in itself, like sometimes. Yeah. Because being sober, being clean, waking up not hungover is a trip. I know. <laughs> like I know. In a good way. Well, and I, I like, try and to... they, they, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll just say that I know it sounds cliche, but being high on life, there's a couple times where I'm like, holy, I don't think yeah. I can possibly feel any better. And then I do another line of Coke, and it's great. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> then I do another line of Coke. Oh. I'm high as a kite. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I was uh, I oh, I was going to say too you you mentioned about you know if this was my last day that's something I think about often like and and it helps to kind of keep me grounded yes. and it helps to kind of keep me in the moment in the day like I will and I don't do it every day cuz I can't re I have you know I can't remember I'm not perfect but I try to do it as often as I can is have that thought like Shane if today was your last day and if I do it first thing in the morning too man my days are usually so good like if today was your last day who would you love? You know, what would you do? Um, and how much would you enjoy today? And it really helps to set the atti my, my attitude for that day. Because, I mean, let's face it, none of us know when our last day, it could be tomorrow, you know, God forbid, but we don't know that. So if, if we were really, tr and I know it is kind of cliche a little bit too, like, you know, if you live it like it was your last, but it's really fucking true. Like if you're able to do that and have that mindset, dude, every day is, is, a phenomenal day i gotta say unless like yeah, your dog gets ran over or something but yeah that's right there there is a lot of beauty in the day and yes it does sound you know like i'm hokey by saying that like i feel i feel hokey saying that you know yeah. what i mean but there is there is a lot of beauty in each day if you just take a little bit of time to to yeah. check it out and and you know I'm not i'm not in a good mood 24 7 nobody yeah, is yeah. you're actually it's funny because I, i'm starting to develop sober memories and by that I'm remembering stuff that I did within the last year. I'm like, I'm so used for so many years. I drank for 20 plus years. Yeah. I just remember so many things. Oh, I did that. Yeah, I was drunk. Da, da, da. I was drunk. Yeah. Always came down to that. And now I have memories that I was like, I was doing that. I was like, oh, that's a sober memory. And everything associated with that is clean. It's a clean life. I'm seeing stuff like in the, uh, you know, the whole picture, it's, it's very, uh, you know, it's not all messy. And yeah. You know, all, yeah. Uh, the fog, the started. fog is clear a little bit. That's right. The fog is clear. I remember yeah. after that first, that first year for me, and it was that, that same feeling. Like I just felt like defrosted a little bit. Like I could actually comprehend some stuff. And, um, that year speaking to that is such a pivotal, um, really a pivotal time for, for, I know it was for me. It sounds like it was for you. I know there's other people out there who are trying to get to, you know, their, their, you know, I know at that point, it's like, man, a year, it seems so far off. Like, what's been working for you? Like, what are some of the things that you've been doing that, that's really been keeping you uh, on your game and just um, and, and helping to keep you sober and help you keep that mindset of just keep moving ahead? I really like waking up not hungover. And I know and that sounds, you know, that's kind of an obvious thing. I like waking up hungover. The payoff that I'm getting from maintaining sobriety is is kind of not completely but it's kind of enough i do have a great network of uh friends that, that i can talk to friends and family yeah. that i can talk to if i'm ever feeling like i'm gonna use uh sometimes i'll even say geez you know today feels really triggery or i want to do that today and i have a really long conversation with myself about doing it in fact i even have went as far uh i think it was last october just passed that i actually did go to the liquor store and buy booze really i brought it back here and i had yeah i brought it to my place well when i was halfway there i said well this is what's happening i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i was halfway there i kind of lost power on the mission i was kind of like well now i've kind of been walking and my head's cleared i'm like kind of don't want to do that now yeah but i went on anyways and i said well you're all kind of stubborn almost like no you said you're going to do this so you have to do it now it's almost what i was thinking went and bought it got it all the way home and i said well i'll have something to eat first well, as you know, generally, if you eat something, it kills booze cravings. It did for me a lot, yeah. and, and maybe some people that don't know that. But uh, another good thing is to delay. If you if I want to drink, I just delay. I said, okay, if you want to drink, Eric, and you want to drink that bad, this kind of self-dialogue that we all have. Yeah. I said, if you want to drink that 
Well, you can wait. Well, you can wait a little while. You can do that tonight. You can do that later. I say, okay. And by the time that later comes around, either I don't feel like it or, you know, I've talked myself into, you know, just not wanting to do it at all, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, That's cool. And, so you're kind, of ma- you're kind of managing... Um, managing your cravings so i mean that's at least what that's kind of what it sounds like to me is that you're you're very aware of these cravings you know that they're going to happen so when they come on it's not like it's not like no 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 you're 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 kind of stepping back and saying um allowing yourself to say okay if you want to you can do that you know later but it's almost like a trick right you really you you really don't want to do it later but at the same time you're just kind of yeah you're kind of easing up on yourself a little bit that seems to work for you huh it does seem to work for me. Um, I have did AA over the years. I haven't, uh, since I've quit, um, to be totally honest, I haven't went to any things. And, you know, I, I'm not saying that that is a good thing. Uh, maybe that could be very dangerous for me. I just know that with the network of friends and family that I have, I also did end up in the hospital before I quit <laughs> drinking. Um, <laughs> I guess I should say that part. Uh, um, yeah, what's is, up with that? Uh, I was, the last time I drank, my last night drinking was a lot of pain in my stomach area. And I had a alcoholic, what they call alcoholic hepatitis. And it's a hepatitis um, brought on from drinking that goes away if you stop drinking. So hepa meaning liver, titus means the swelling of. So this hepatitis in my liver, um, it was brought on by drinking heavily and consistently. And if you just stop it'll go away. And and that was very painful. And the doctor told me, he said, you know, I'm not telling you have to quit, but he's like, it might be a good idea to cut down really well because I'm going to be 40 this year. Uh, my body's not going to get any better to me. Um, so um, it's, it's being pretty good right now. I, I find my body is, is very good um, at forgiving me for the years I've drank so far. Yeah. So I don't I want to test those waters. I think I, if I can get out of drinking in that lifestyle, which I've maintained, then I should just stay there. How was – um? so here's an interesting interesting question I have for you. I think it's interesting at least. Uh, when when you transition from from uh, from playing shows and, and uh, you know, really getting into, into the creative space when you're drunk or high or whatever, um, how has that been transitioning into sobriety in – being able to connect with your with your musical talent or with um, with your love for for playing music or just jamming out or writing or uh, has that been difficult for you? It was very hard. Um, it almost made me want to back to drinking because I felt so naked and exposed, um, <laughs> just not using alcohol or, or drugs when I'm on stage. But I'm slowly getting there, and I can achieve. I found now I can achieve the same level of how I felt on stage without booze or drugs. And and it's, it's really nice actually. So, so you found kind of a, you found something that, how how long did that take? Like, would you say that's just starting to come back or was that something that, did it take a couple months? Yeah. Just like within, well, what time is it right now? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Once again. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) No, within the last couple gigs that I did within the last couple months, really. So, well over a year. I know not everything's cut and paste, but I find a good year and a bit um, is definitely has did it for me, and I, and I feel like doing it too. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's about the same with me too. It was about a year before I like could pick up a guitar or a pen and like actually start to mm-hmm. write some stuff and feel and not feel super like weird and like awkward. Yeah. You know. And when was the last uh, show you played? Uh, last show, I actually just did one last week for a 50th, uh, birthday party. Nice. And, uh, it was, yeah, it was actually, it was, it was really fun. Um, you know, and, and remember at like all these things that I'm playing at, it's almost like an occupational hazard for me because everybody <laughs> drinks at these things, right? Yeah. So, uh, but it, it, it doesn't really bother me that, that, that people are drinking and, you know, nobody was like fall down drunk or anything like that it was very you know just socially drinking yeah and it was you know nice to see people having a good time uh, the people that can actually you know have the good time yeah and uh, i know i was always jealous not, of those people <laughs> yeah um yeah. Would, would you say that because kind of to, to, to jump back a little bit um about yeah. you you know going into the hospital and really having some serious health issues from it um was that kind of one of the 
one of the breaking points for you? And, it, and has that really helped to keep you on, on the path of being able to stay away from booze? It, it, it has been. You know, I got to say it's a big thing because I said, you know what? If it's this health problem now, I know what that leads to. That, that, that kind of health problems that I was having can lead definitely to cirrhosis of, of the liver, which is lethal. Yeah. And, you know, it's a slow, painful death. And I'm like, really? I'm getting older. Come on now. Like, it's time to grow up and just live your life. Yeah. You know, not not so carefree, like almost like I'm invincible. No, life will find a way uh, <laughs> to bring you down if you think you're invincible. <laughs> That's for sure. So, that is for sure. Yeah. What's up with Mr. Turnbull? Or what? What is it again, Mister? Uh, sorry, Mr. not Mister Trimble. Uh, <laughs> Mr. What is it again? <laughs> like, well, he's right here. Yeah, Mister Metcalf. Mister Metcalf. Yeah, Mister Metcalf. Yeah. That's what it was. Mister Metcalf. Actually, you know, a little uh, hidden hidden thing that I can let the listeners know. Uh-huh. Mister Metcalf. So you remember how I talked about earlier about <laughs> going to the liquor store and buying booze? Uh-huh. Well, because I had booze that I bought that I wasn't going to drink, I decided to make it a Mister Metcalf. Ep- episode and it was him pouring the booze down the drink down the drain nice. so i i had mr metcalf pour it down the drain because it, it wasn't a good idea to drink that doesn't solve your problems yeah in episode so maybe all these the mr metcalf i think if you look closely at them i think they were my therapy i was just that gonna say that, that, that's so that's so <laughs> great that you just brought that up because i was thinking the same damn thing like I think that you found this element of being able to create and have fun and um, almost like occupy time and use that as a tool. I mean, we all have different ways and different things we use, and that seems to be working for you quite quite well. Yeah. That's what I also should say to, to the people that are listening, uh, the, the videos and everything that I'm talking about is on my channel, on the YouTube channel, Eric Turnbull and Friends. And that's where it has the Mr. Metcalf videos. But then they've now segued. They're all just me blogging yeah. uh, my daily stuff about my job and stuff like that. And I don't like doing the character anymore, Mr. Metcalf. He'll he'll come back, I'm sure, here and there again. But I kind of got sick of doing him every day. Maybe there'll be a movie, you know? Maybe there'll be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's a pretty funny character, I got to say. The uh, the glasses and the uh, kind of like a mop, almost like a mop wig. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's yeah, pretty funny, exactly. man. And he, uh, so what is what what is the? I mean, I guess that's kind of a it's kind of a shitty question. Like, what does the future look like for you? But I don't mean to say like, what does the future look like? But like, what not is good. what's that? Not good. No, it's not good at all. Like, I am going to go drink after what we're doing here today. Thanks a lot. You, you triggered me, Shane. You triggered it. This is on you. Oh, your show is terrible. I'm never listening to it again. <laughs> no, but like, I guess, I guess what I guess what I'm kind of saying is like, um, sobriety has obviously brought you to this new new life that you haven't really experienced in over 20 years right i mean probably right. relationships with family with friends with your son even um yep. what is what is moving ahead like look like for you like what are you uh writing and 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 um yes. and playing and are you gonna like what what does that look like for you man okay so i i, I kind of have goal wise i'd like to be established um more established with my music and comedy I need to be creating, I need to be vlogging, uh, I need to be, be doing that every day if I can. Something it's hard because I do work full time as a building manager. So um, that does afford me, uh, because I live where I work, it does afford me some some freedom uh, here and there uh, with some stuff. Uh, but I just need to be keep creating, uh, make connections, something like this, meeting you and yeah. you have me on the show. Is, is I thank you very much, by the way for having me on. I really appreciate that. And uh, watching my documentary uh, for the future. I just want to keep uh, putting my name out there, getting known for uh, for what talents I have to offer and hopefully uh, have some fun while I'm doing it. Yeah, it's cool, man. I, um, I, I like to, I like to hear that. And I kind of asked you that too, because it was a kind of a reason why I guess is because for me, just from watching the documentary and, and chatting with you a bit, like, I almost feel, and correct me if I'm wrong once again, but I almost feel like this is like a second chance for you. To, you have a lot to offer in your art and in, in your 
guitar and just as a just as a man too you know i mean there's a lot that that um i see in you like making people laugh and just being a good dude and doing it sober and being that example and so i guess what i'm saying is yeah i feel like you you've get you've gotten this second chance and i'm really hoping i was hoping that you were going to say that that you're really pursuing like just continuing to do what you love to do and um and and providing that service and hopefully touching some lives too you know what, and Shane, just to interrupt you there, sorry. Um, a, a lot of people told me for a lot of years, like, you should be doing this, man. You should be doing that. And I was too busy. I was doing. I was performing. Yeah. But I was not working, like, yeah. hard as the way I should be working that. Like, being talented and having talent is one thing. But you need to put some serious work into it. Like, yeah. all any downtime work time connections making all the stuff with social media it's so good with all the stuff that's that's available there to to network with facebook and you know yeah. i share videos on facebook i share them on youtube with the channel and stuff like that so really and you said second chance i i really do agree and that's actually nice to hear because you know somebody <laughs> like ah eric you were pretty good in the day buddy <laughs> you're sober now but you know just just live yeah and, and you're good well, what, what what was it for you though? Like at that, was there a point you can remember, like where you were? Um, let's say you got to that point where you were you were you were still playing a lot. You know, you were you were kind of um, coming up and and writing new material. Like, what was it? When was that point when it just like when the alcohol or the drugs just really grabbed you and then started to do the opposite for you? I don't think we got into that really yet. That's right. And that is funny because when I first, drugs did work for me. Alcohol did work for me when I started out. It was yeah. great. It was I, because I was young. I could get over hangovers faster. Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of energy. And it, yes, it slowly, I think it was the last, you know what? I, I'll say what really did a number on me was cocaine. Mm. Uh, that whole eight month, one year thing, that really uh, I seemed to just wipe a lot of motivation that drug turned me inwards mm. and I didn't want to go out, I didn't want to perform on a stage anymore. So they complete when you think of cocaine, you think of social and just talking the way I'm talking to you right now. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm high on caffeine, right? Yeah. So uh, it totally didn't. It made me uh, really concentrate on music and write, but yeah. be inwards, like just not just not uh, want to get out there or anything like that. And it, you know, well, if you're it, so it, no, that's funny. I'm, that's funny. You describe it like that because I have this a similar experience with that. Like. I would instead, so if, when, when I had a, a big bag of cocaine, I would rather, instead of going and going and hanging out with a bunch of people, I would rather go back to my house, my house by myself and do all the cocaine and just fucking yes. sit there and write or just be weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. and it's, and, and you would think the opposite of that, but I don't know. It's, it's a really weird, odd thing. I wonder if it's because we don't want to share any of that cocaine. <laughs> That's probably a big fucking part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. This is mine. <laughs> It's like fucking Smeagol yeah. and shit. <laughs> oh, man. I sold a very, a very expensive guitar for cocaine, and I got it back. So I am really? very lucky. After I sobered up, I got it back. Uh, a very a very kind gentleman <laughs> sold it back to me to uh, what what I sold it for. And it was really? worth $7,000, and I sold it for 1000 and he let me buy it back for 1000 So I love you, Dell. I love you, Dell. <laughs> Yeah, damn, Dell's a nice guy because uh, that's uh, he got quite the bargain. It sounds like, and you got the yeah. bargain that was probably gone in a day or two. I would imagine. Um, Canadian Guitar Festival champion. Let's touch on that for for a couple of minutes, man. Um, what it what is that? I mean, other than what it says, it um, is the Canadian Guitar Festival yeah, champion. Yeah. But every every year, um, uh, they put on the Canadian Guitar Festival, organized by uh, Del Vazo and. Uh, outside of Kingston at Lobro Lake in Ontario and uh, players from all around the world come to perform and they have uh, a big stage set up and people perform during the day and at night they have special performers and then on the Sunday they have the Canadian Fingerstyle Championship where it's a competition you get to play uh, it, the way it was when I played you had three songs your whole uh, performance should not exceed 15 minutes. You cannot talk on stage, and you're there to play, and you are judged on a very intricate marking system of how you play. Hmm. And based upon that, you find out whether you placed. And at the time, there was uh, first, second, and third place. And uh, first place 
uh, which I won the second year. The first year, I won third place, so I just got a cool guitar. But if you get first place, you get to pick one of the guitars they have available, like anything. You get pick of the litter. So I picked a, a very beautiful Greenfield handmade guitar by Michael Greenfield in uh, uh, Montreal, who makes like you know these guitars um, that are just a beautiful instrument. So um, I won one of those, um, and it just it, it felt really good. I was on my game that year. If you if you were gonna give some advice to somebody out there who's in their first you know few months of uh, of recovery and if you can kind of think back to your first couple of months, um, what's something that you think really helped you that you could share with someone out there listening who's trying to uh, stay on their game and, and really not go back to the bottle? Um, don't be hard on yourself. Just focus on staying sober. Like I gave myself permission to. Not go crazy, but like I didn't have to focus on my diet as much. Like I said, it's okay if you had a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I didn't do any exercise. My expectations for myself were just like, you're sober today, okay? Yeah. That's all you focus on right now, and that's good. You're focused on that. Okay, did you make it through today sober? Yeah, check, done. We don't care. I'm not going to be hard about myself, whatever. And just maintaining, you know, trying to get up with a positive attitude for the day. And, and like I said, just be hard on yourself and just take it. Um, I, I know it's cliche, but one day at a time. But yeah. as long as you get through the day, that hour, that time, that's 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 what you, uh, you know, it's such a satisfaction to get through those 24 hours even. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can just get through. Yeah. yeah, so. Well, yeah, because we can get caught up in, in well, I'll speak for myself. I know I can get caught up in, in the what's ahead, you know, what's next, what's next, what's next. And, and I yeah. forget sometimes to, you know, to to live in the moment and then realize some of the accomplishments that I've already, you know, made or how far I've come because I'm always so worried about the next thing. And that can really get me in, in trouble. Thank God it hasn't led me back to drinking yet, and I hope it never does. But what it can do is it can get me um, in my own head and then I can start yeah. being a, a dick, you know what I mean? Like just in general, just like all caught up in myself. And I, it's like the worst feel. And then I know, you know, you know, when you start acting like that and um, it might take a minute though. And then it's kind of like, okay, boom, let's go back to those tools that I have know that work. And then I can kind of reset, you know? Yeah. And that's, uh, I find uh, another thing uh, just, I want to touch on if I have a moment here is, is another thing for people that quit. Uh, drinking dreams, uh, mm. dreams that you used or drinking. I had one last night. Really? <laughs> like, what was it? And I did two tequila at a, <laughs> it was like a restaurant bar. Uh -huh. I only did two and I was so guilt ridden because of that. And I kind of was like, well, I just might as well keep going now. But I said, you know what? If you just stop now, you can go to bed and you'll feel okay. You are, yeah. You'll probably feel shitty in the morning, but not as shitty if you keep doing And I just felt this terrible whole dialogue going on. But I woke up and it was so relieving that I didn't. But drinking dreams, I had a lot more of them when I first quit. Yeah. And and I also, they're drinking dreams, but they're also known as relief dreams. Because when you wake up, you're quite relieved because you didn't drink. And that's another thing to show you. It's like, hey, you know what? I didn't drink, so that's good. Yeah, those those are... Those are kind of upset dreams to have that you used and, and you drank and, and meanwhile you didn't. Yeah, I, I, I can remember a couple of those too and same thing and just waking up just feeling so guilty and just such like a yeah. – like just and then so thankful that it was just a dream because like yes. – and then just be like literally just be like, oh my God, thank you God. Like I'm – Oh, I thought I was, I thought I was wasted. You know what I mean? When I woke up and I was alone yeah. and man, yeah, that's some, uh, and they don't, and I think that's a good point too, because I think in the first few months, they're very, very, um, they happen often. At least they did with me. sounds like yeah. with you too, the first, the first like yeah. three to six months, like I had quite a few of them. And then now I get them every once in a while, you know, after a couple of years, they'll still get a weird one. And I think I had a dream I smoked smoked a bunch of pot one night and I just got super stoned and ate a bunch of food and like just well yeah same thing woke up and just felt like it was just so grateful like oh that didn't happen good stuff man yeah um where can uh where can folks find you at man if anyone wants to reach out to you wants to check out uh more of the videos uh, more of your music uh, where can they go to Eric yeah, so I have two channels. One is the Eric Turnbull and Friends one uh, with my vlogs on it. 
Um, and, and that's there is some music that I will do sometimes in those vlogs because I, I like to add that in there. But my main stuff is just Eric Turnbull. That's the channel. It's just my full name, Eric Turnbull. And I am Eric with a CK. So it's E R I C K. And Turnbull is just like two words turn and bull. Uh, T U R N B U L L. You can search that in YouTube. You're able to find me and, and my videos. As well as uh, on that Eric Turmel channel, there is the documentary, Jacob's Dad, yes. in there. Uh, you can check that out. I'm also uh, somewhat of a friend collector on the old Facebook there, too. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't, I don't, I am terrible for this. I just add anybody. I see, I our picture. I'm just a friend collector. Yeah. I'm trying to. I, I just want to be that guy, uh, you know, <laughs> just has all these friends. It's like, are those your real friends? No, they're not, but uh, they're my Facebook friends. They're my Facebook well, friends, Mom, shit. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, if you want to hit me up on Facebook, just because, you know, sometimes Facebook, can, it's a little more personal, and uh, I don't mind, you know what I mean? It's it's nice to have it's. It's nice to have Facebook friends, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have friends all in this uh, this reality that I live in. Oh no, yeah, it's just so. It is kind of funny too. People people do get caught up in that though, huh? Like the friend, the face, the Facebook friend. But you know what? It's good, man. It's a good. It's a good network. Like like I mentioned too. Like you're in the you're in the uh, the the private sober guy sober girl Facebook group. What a great group! If for those of you out there listening you know, who are I, not part of it, not, check it out. Yeah. I sorry, I just want to touch on that. I am seeing these posts from people that are 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 so great. They're telling, they're putting in there like, "Thanks, guys, I made it one week, or yeah. I made it you no know, forty eight hours, or so and so is sober. This is my thirtieth day, or it's my one year." I love that people are doing that, which actually influenced me. I did my one year sober video. Yeah. I actually, it was after the fact that I thought, "Hey, not to bombard the feed or anything," but I thought. Throw it on your uh, page, and it was well received. So yeah. thanks for not reporting me as spam or abuse or anything, <laughs> and uh, let my video shine on your yeah. side of the private group. But you know, just to let people know that you know it's we're all human here. Yeah, and it's a it's a great Facebook page by the well, way. That's, that and, and that's that's what it's about, man. And I'm 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 so glad that people are interactive, and that's that's yes. really when it comes down to is about people connecting and talking about it and communicating, you know what I mean? And just getting, getting it out there that like, Hey, it's okay. Like we all got our own shit. And a lot of it is very similar things, you know, and mm -hmm. from different backgrounds and um, different religions and skin colors. And I mean, all kinds of stuff. And it's like, dude, it doesn't discriminate addiction, alcoholism. So let's, let's talk about it. Let's get it out in the open, man. And it's just a, it's a great place, a great place to do that. Um, I appreciate you coming on today, man. Like, thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing some of your story. Um, thanks for talking with us and thanks for being active in the, in the group. And, uh, man, it's just, uh, it's a pleasure, man. Thank you so much, Shane. Thanks again for tuning in today. Thanks to our sponsors, DXRX Medical Foundations, Recovery Network, Sober Nation. Much love to all of you. And if you'd like to support us, you can do that by leaving us a review on iTunes or you can support us by becoming a patron at Patreon. Go to that soberguide.com, click on the Patreon link, and uh, help support the show. Help us keep bringing you the best recovery. No bullshit. Peace, love, respect, keep your blood clean.